Welcome back. We've reached the summit of the Temple of the Rakatans, and Bastila is here waiting for us. Well, let's not put this off any longer. Oh no. Oh no. This is definitely not looking good. Revan, I knew you'd come for me. Malak thought you might be afraid to enter the temple again, but he doesn't know you like I do. Not anymore. Not since you've changed. Quickly, Bastila, come with us. We have to escape before Malak arrives. Escape? You don't understand. I have sworn allegiance to Lord Malak and the Sith. I am no longer a pawn of the Jedi Council. So, it has come to this. A pawn of the Jedi Council? What are you talking about? Surely you know what I mean, Revan. Look at what the Council did to you. They turned you into their puppet. The same thing they do to all who are truly strong in the Force. They speak of the dark side as if it is something to be feared. But in reality, their only goal is to manipulate those who are strong in the Force. The fear of the dark side is a tool to maintain control. Why do you think the Jedi forbid you and Malak from joining the Mandalorian Wars? They knew you would realize your true potential and break free of their domination. Malak has shown me how the Jedi Council have been using me the same way they once tried to use you. They've been holding me back because they knew one day I would surpass them all. I agree that the Jedi and the Council are not perfect by any stretch. But if your concern is about control and about people using each other, then serving Malak is definitely not uh, conducive toward avoiding people who possess a great desire to control others. Not at all. It's not too late, Bastila. You can still turn away from the dark side. I resisted it first. I endured the Sith torments with the passionless serenity of a true Jedi, emptying my mind. But after a week of endless tortures, I finally saw the truth. Malak forced me to acknowledge my anger and pain. He showed me the liberating power of these emotions. Then he made me see how the Jedi Council has denied me what is mine by right. The Jedi Council gladly used my battle meditation in their wars, but they still treated me like a child, like an inferior. They were jealous of my power, of what I could become. They wanted me to bow and call them master and follow their code and obey their every order. But all the while, they were exploiting my battle meditation for their own use. And Malak isn't? Don't be lured in by these Sith lies, Bastila. Lies? You were the one living a lie, Revan. The Jedi Council made you into something you are not. They programmed you to be their slave. You used to be Revan, Master of the Sith, but no longer. You were simply a pawn of the Jedi Council in the Republic they serve, like I was, until Malak freed me from their shackles. A pity the power you once had is so diluted in you. You could have been as strong as I am now. Stronger even, but that will never happen now. With the power of the Starforge, Malak will destroy the Republic and conquer the galaxy. And I will be the apprentice at his side, after I prove my worth by killing you. Let's make- Okay. So we're gonna have to face off against Bastl. I was really hoping it would not come to this, but it looks like we're gonna have to. A pity, though. Let's make this quick. I thought we had something. He was stronger than I would have thought possible after what the Jedi Council did to you. Seems that Malak was wrong. The power of the dark side is not lost to you after all, Revan. You talk about the Jedi Council using me and that I'm a pawn of them and whatnot, but while I certainly might agree that their methods may have been questionable, I still had the ability to choose what I am right now. I mean, you seem to be forgetting about that. I could have gone to the dark side again if I wanted to, but I willingly, willingly chose to follow this path, even with the knowledge that I was Revan. Don't call me that. I'm not Revan anymore. I'm Kane now. You can deny what you are, Revan, but you're only fooling yourself. I know the truth. I have seen the shadows inside your mind, remember? I was there when you nearly died in the trap set by the Jedi Council. I used the Force to preserve your life, Revan. We are forever linked by my actions on that bridge. That is how I know you will come back to the light. These are not your true feelings, Revan. You are speaking as a tool of the Jedi Council, as I once did. But now I see how the Jedi used us both. The Council tried to exploit the bond between us. 
They hoped I would draw out your memories to lead them to the Star Forge. We were slaves to their will, like all who follow the Jedi Code. But in our shared visions of the star maps, I also felt the so-called taint within you. I resisted it at first, but now I embrace the power of the dark side. Your dark side. That may be true that I had uh, some taint within me, but I think we've all uh, got some amount of a taint in, inside all of us. And resisting it is what ultimately makes us stronger. Um, succumbing to the dark side is not really strength at all. And no, I'm not going to do what I did before as Revan. It may be true that uh, joining the Mandalorian Wars may have helped some people, but it destroyed who I was as a person, as Revan. And I'm not going to let that happen again. Mistakes. No, Revan. The only mistake you are making is the one you are making now. You deny yourself the power that is yours by right. Only now do I realize how strong you are. You deserve to be the true master of the Sith, not Malak. I see this now. Together we can destroy your old apprentice. Join with me and reclaim your lost identity. I don't want that identity anymore. I don't even remember those days. Your mind was too badly damaged to ever fully restore your memories, Revan. But your power, your strength of will, the essence of who and what you are, these things still remain. Once, long ago, you defied the Jedi Council, freeing yourself from their control. You claimed your rightful title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Together we can defeat Malak and take back what is yours. Earlier, after the Leviathan, I had mentioned that there was going to come a point in the game when we would have to make a final decision about which path we were going to pursue, the light side or the dark side. Well, that moment has now come. At this point in the game, you can either choose to join with Bastila and supplant Malak as the ultimate Sith Master, or... You can choose not to do that, and go up against Malak with the hope of eradicating the Sith. And hopefully, we can convince Bastila to turn away from the dark side in the process, which we are going to do. Turn away from this path, Bastila. The dark side leads only to destruction. Bastila, it is not too late for you to be saved. The teachings of the Jedi can lead you from the dark side back into the light and the true understanding of the Force. You are beneath my contempt, Juhani. When you felt the power of the dark side, you fled to a cave like some cowering animal. You know nothing of the Force or its true potential. But you, Revan, the power of the dark side is yours to command. You can use it to destroy Malak. With my help, you could rule over the entire galaxy. You talk about claiming power, Bastila, but the truth is... Just because I can do something doesn't necessarily mean I should. The Dark Lord Revan is dead. I am a servant of the light now. You were a pathetic fool, Revan. Together we could have defeated Malak and ruled over an empire. But now, I will be at Lord Malak's side instead. You will be crushed with the Republic and all the fools who bow down to the Jedi Council. No one can stand against the power of the Star Forge and the Sith Fleet. Well, I guess that's about it for that. Alright, we've gotten a bunch of points there, and at this point in the game, because of the decision um, that you can make there, there's going to be some significant differences in the way the game progresses from this point on, depending on which uh, path you're choosing. And because I'm going to be playing a light side um, ending here, and I've been playing as a light side character, let me go ahead and take care of this. Let's take care of the disruptor field and the energy shield. There we go. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and stop by the uh, the Elder Compound first and give the guy his uh, research material there. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, because I'm playing a light side character, it would not be prudent uh, at all for me to try the dark side path, even as a, you know a bonus video with an alternate ending or something like that. It is possible, 
But the game makes it quite difficult uh, for you to try going the alternate path um, if um, your character is the exact opposite of that. I haven't personally tried it, but that is what I've heard, and that's also why it's not very good to be a neutral character toward the end either, is because that is a very big issue. So, what would have happened if we turned the dark side? Because I'm sure you're all wondering how that would have progressed if we had joined with Bastila right there and then. Well, if we had done that, then we would have had to have fought Julie and Juhani and killed them both, and then Bastila would join our party. I'll stop the explanation right there for now because it's going to continue once we get back to the Ebon Hawk since there are some significant differences in what happens there as well. But for now, we've got quite a mission ahead of us. Not only do we have to stop Malik, but we've also got to find a way to stop Bastila from using her battle meditation. Because uh, the Republic is on its way, and if Bastila has allied herself with Malik, then that will present the Republic a significant problem in terms of surviving whatever onslaught the Sith fleet is going to be presenting them with. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and visit the Elders, and then I'm going to talk to Julie and Juhani and see if we can wrap up their, uh, their dialogues, see if there's anything we can do with that. So I'm hoping we can do that by before we get to the end of the game. Uh, is this the guy? No. There's the guy, right there. I have found data on the genetic structure of your species. Excellent! Alright, we've got some more XP for that. Sweet. Um, whoop, why did I go back there? That's weird. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and talk to Julie and Juhani right here. This is a good place to do it. Actually, no, cancel that. I'm going to do it out on the beach. The beach is a good place for that. Beaches are great places for deep conversations. You can quote me on that, by the way. They, they really are great places for great conversations. I mean, check that view out, guys. Here we go. Got something on your mind, dude? So if you liked Kashik so much, why did you want to leave? Are we back to that again? Yes. I find it hard to believe you left the Wookiees just for some adventure. Hmm, what's the best way for me to approach this? Uh, perhaps it's time for a little story. Couldn't you just answer the question for once? You just keep quiet there, you. <laughs> I had to put up with all your busybody questions, haven't I? Well, now you listen to a story, damn it! <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes, the story. You almost made me forget about it. Nice try, but I'm not that old just yet. Now then, a young man sees a terribly venomous snake in his small village. Nervous, he watches the snake carefully until it leaves. The young man follows the snake into the forest. He clears the branches out of its path and helps it over obstacles. He even works to keep it fed. This is a very long story. Shush! Many nights pass, and still the young man continues to follow the snake. He even follows it into the sands of the great desert. In the desert, the snake eventually grows hungry. It turns and bites the young man. It's poison quickly working its way into his system. Finally, curious, the snake looks at the boy as he lays dying and asks, Why were you foolish enough to follow me all the way out into the desert? The boy looks back and replies, Did I follow you? I thought I was leading you away from everyone else. And then he died. Ooh. So, am I supposed to be the snake? Well, now, that's what I wanted to see for myself. That's a long way to come just to risk dying. I've come a long way as it is. And I'm going to die anyway, so that doesn't bother me in the least. I've told you before that you have a destiny before you. This does not mean, however, that your future is already written. They are not the same thing. You have the choice of which direction you take your destiny in. More than engine sucking Andor, certainly, <laughs> but even he had a choice. So far, you've chosen to take the lighter path. Can you stay that course, even through the challenges ahead? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not here to judge you or tell you which path to take. 
I'm here ready to offer you my help, should you ask for it. I do that because I think it's important. More important than remaining in my home and pretending the galaxy doesn't exist. That's why I'm here. Well, thank you, Joey. I'm glad you came. <laughs> I'm rather glad I came too, really. You're a fine young lad. I hope... I hope things turn out well for you. Now then, I've chatted enough for one lifetime. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Good deal. I'm glad Joey's a part of our crew. And now we've gotten... Oh, Juhani is done too? Okay, so I guess Juhani... Um, uh, Juhani's side quest is over when you see Bastila. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I haven't really looked at when that is ended, but it seems like it was there before we went to see Bastila while we're here on this planet. This may be the last time I will have a chance to talk to you. I just want to thank you for all that you have done for me. For saving me from the dark side. For accepting me on your journey. I value your companionship. It is good to know that I have been of some value. I will prove my true worth to you. We will defeat Malak and save the Republic from the Sith threat once and for all. You already have proved your worth, Giovanni. And that is what we shall do. I pledge my life to your cause. I will stand by you till the end. Thank you. I really do like the characters in this game. Like I said earlier, I know there's some people who don't really like some of the characters upon first glance, and Juhani is certainly one of those characters. Um, Karth and Bastila are others, but I think they're all very multi-layered and interesting. And um, I'll give you my thoughts on the various characters once we're all back inside the Ebon Hawk again. Um, so I'll save that for that before we go off to the Star Forge. But overall, I really do think the writing for these characters was excellent. And they definitely lived up to the Star Wars name in many ways. At this point, I guess we have just Candorous left to talk to, and of course Bastila's uh, side quest is, um going to be continued when we find... oops, not this way. When we find her on the Star Forge, presumably. It seems like she was heading off somewhere, and that's uh, the nearest thing. And Malak is apparently on there, at least from what we've seen. So we'll probably find her there as well. Oh, there's everybody else. Hey, guys. You're back. But where's Bastila? I is she alive? What happened inside that temple? A lot happened. Bastila has fallen to the dark side. She fled to the Star Forge. The dark side? Bastila? No! No! How could that happen? She was always in danger of being seduced by the dark side, Karth. Bastila was strong, but she was always impatient and headstrong. Malak preyed upon her weakness. This planet is a tainted place. The Star Forge and the Temple have twisted the Force into an instrument of evil, just as Malak has twisted Bastila into a servant of the Sith. She can still be saved, can't she? I mean, we had something. Malak has a strong hold on Bastila now. It will be difficult for her to break free of his influence, especially considering her long association with you. Remember the bond that was forged between you when she rekindled the spark that was your life. Through that bond, she touched your memories, and also the echo of the dark taint within you. But there's still hope for her, right? I mean, Revan rejected the dark side, so Basila could too, right? We still might be able to save her. That is very true. And if she uh, touched that taint within me when we forged that bond, then maybe she can touch the light in me now that I've been redeemed. I don't know what fate awaits us. But I sense Bastila still has a role to play in the events to come. I have no doubt she will be waiting for us on the Star Forge. No doubt. But let's go then before she has time to organize a bigger welcoming committee. Alrighty. Good deal. Well, we're back on the Hawk now. And we can go ahead and fix the hyperdrive. Let's go ahead and go here to the hyperdrive. It's all sparky there. The hyperdrive has been repaired and is functioning properly. Alrighty. Good deal. 
Well, everybody, we are at the very end of the game. We're about to go off to the Star Forge. So, um, at this point, I should go ahead and probably mention what would have happened um, if you chose the Dark Side path and you came back to the Ebon Hawk with Bastila. Obviously, if you fell to the Dark Side at the very end of the game and permanently chose it, that would not really uh, do well with some of the members of your party. Karth, for one, would not be very surprised that you betrayed him in the end, and he would run off and uh, try to find another way off the planet, basically. Um, Candorus and HK-47, as dark side characters, would still stand beside you, and uh, they wouldn't object to you turning to the dark side at all. T3, of course, is a neutral character, and he would follow you no matter what, so he would not say or do anything as a result of this choice, but Mission and Zalbar are the two rather interesting characters. Mission would be quite appalled at what you were doing, but Zalbar would be rather conflicted because, as uh, you'll remember, he swore a life debt to us earlier in the game. And although he disagrees with uh, the choice of the dark side, he will um, still want to follow you anyway. And at that point in the game, you can actually, if you have a very, very high persuade skill, Persuade Zalbar to kill Mission right then and there. Which is quite unpleasant, I must admit. At any rate, though, if you do take Zalbar with you to the Star Forge and have him accompany you, a little ways into the mission, he will actually have second thoughts about what happened, and then he will turn on you and you'll be forced to kill him there. Yeah, so basically Candrus, HK, and T3 are really the only party members that you will have after you choose the dark side um, for the Star Forge, essentially. Because Karth will be gone, um, and Joey and Juhani, of course, will be gone, and uh, so yeah, and Mission will be gone too, I believe. Um, even if you didn't uh, persuade Zalwar to kill her. Um, I don't really know if we can talk to Candorus here, but let me see. Yeah, what do you want? I guess we can't. Your choice. Maybe we have to actually get off the planet first? Hmm, well, let's try that at least. I don't think we can talk to anybody else about anything. Let's see if Mission has anything to say. Hey there, what can I do for you? Um, nope, nothing here. Okay. And, uh, Karth, do you have anything to say? Yes, what's on your mind? Nope. You got it. Zalbar, I know he doesn't really have much to say. Julie and Juhani, I don't really think they've got anything to say, because we've exhausted everything with them just a little while ago. So, at this point in the game, I'm going to go ahead and give you my thoughts about each of the characters and what I think of them, in the order that we met them. First character we met was Karth. A lot of people think Karth is kind of a whiny, angsty character, and I can definitely see where they're coming from with that. Um, but Karth is definitely a good guy. The storyline with his son definitely gave him some depth, and although it was a, it felt like a typical estranged father and son story at first, the fact that the son was a part of the Sith made it even more compelling, I think. And while his story arc wasn't necessarily the best, he was interesting to have around, and I did enjoy talking with him quite a bit. All in all, I really did enjoy Karth as a character, and Raphael Sabarge, I'm probably totally mangling that name, um, did a quite an excellent job of voicing him, in my opinion at least. Uh, next up is Bastila, who is not here with us. A lot of people don't like Bastila either, just because she can be very uh, feisty and very uh, headstrong about making sure that you don't fall to the dark side earlier on in the game, at least before her fall to the dark side. And um, while I certainly uh, don't uh, necessarily hold with her points of view all the time, I really do enjoy her. I, I think she's a very fascinating character who's got a lot to learn about the Force, but definitely has good intentions, even if she may uh, fall here later on. The romance with Basila, though, is definitely something that could have been done a little bit more thoroughly, I think. I don't know exactly what other word to use there, but I feel like it just was kind of shoved in late into the game, and there really wasn't a whole lot building up to it. I mean, there was some build up, but I guess part of that is just the fact that the Jedi can't really um, 
um, mingle romantically, and so there really wasn't much that you could do about that without making the game feel like it was disturbing canon and whatnot. I don't know, I, I'm sure there, there is a way to do that, but I felt like they could have just done a better job with it. Um, I think I have mentioned it earlier, but if you were playing a female Revan, then Karth would be your romantic interest. Mission. Mission is definitely one of my favorite characters. I feel like the Twi'leks have been kind of used um, as just dancers and, and masseuses and whatnot throughout the Star Wars universe. And so it's very refreshing to see a Twi'lek character who is not that. Who is a teenager and is trying to find her way in the world. I do enjoy that she, she goes from being street urchin to being an awesome, awesome character on the Ebon Hawk who starts to grow up and get over her brother a little bit. I'm also very glad that her brother's story arc did not necessarily end on a happy ending, but it did give her some closure, too. Zalbar, um, is a Wookiee. Enough said. I mean, Wookiees are amazing. I mean, they are fun to have around. And at the same time, Zalbar, um, is not Chewbacca. My first reaction to seeing Zalbar in this game was, oh, it's a Wookiee, you know, he's like Chewbacca. Because, you know, Chewbacca was obviously the only Wookiee that we, that most fans would know about when they uh, see a Wookiee, another Wookiee. Um, so you'd expect Zalbar to have all those same trappings. But unlike Chewbacca, who was clearly distanced from his homeworld and was pretty much with Han Solo every step of the way, uh, Zalbar, although he was, you know, he had a big, strong friendship with Mission, which was another cool thing about these two, he definitely had issues involving his home planets that were very interesting to see, and the side story with him and Chundar and uh, Freyr was definitely interesting. Um, I feel like it, it was a much more interesting Wookiee storyline than the little glimpse into Wookiee life that we got in Revenge of the Sith. Um, because, you know, obviously when we first see the, you know, one Wookiee, you know, one of the big questions that uh, that gets into some people's heads is, you know, what would a whole planet of these things look like? You know, kind of the same thing with Boba Fett, you know, when we found out that the, it was the Mandalorians who made his armor. I mean, what would a bunch of Boba Fetts, you know, flying around with Mandalorian armor and jetpacks and all that, I mean, what would that look like? That would be amazing. And I think Zalbar's story really delivers on that for the Wookiees. I mean, we get to see Wookiee culture... We get to see what their village is like, we get to see what some of their traditions are like, and although Kashyyyk was not one of my favorite planets in the game, Zalbar's storyline was certainly a highlight. T3M4 is a utility droid, and he fulfills that purpose very well. I was hoping that um, he would have some more clever banter with one of the other characters, maybe just here around the ship, maybe with HK-47, just just to strike up a nice C-3PO and R2-D2 vibe between the two of them. But, unfortunately, that doesn't quite happen. It does, however, happen in the second game. Uh, and I will leave it at that. Um, Candorous was one of the characters that, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't quite so fond of when I first met him. But as I got to know him more on a subsequent playthrough of the game, I really did enjoy his character. The Mandalorians are definitely in a class of their own. The game is definitely very morally black and white in quite a few respects, at least when compared with other RPGs. But Candorous um, is definitely a morally gray character. He's definitely a dark side character along that spectrum. But although his uh, what he does is very dark side, you can tell that he definitely has some good intentions, and those play into his character development, especially toward the last few conversations. And it's for that reason that I really do enjoy hearing his perspective on things. Juhani. Again, Juhani is one of those characters that's kind of a bit of a Marmite character. Either a lover or hater, and again, you don't really have to take her here on the journey with you. But I do enjoy having her around, just because it's interesting to see a character who has a lot of insecurities, but finds comfort in being, you know, by somebody's side who values her. That is, if you treat her with respect. Again, as I mentioned on Kashyyyk earlier, Juhani's responses and the ability to develop her character is contingent uh, on what you say to her and if you are kind to her. 
Otherwise, she will shut you off um, if you choose to reject her. Um, HK-47 is definitely a highlight of the game. There is a reason why this droid is a fan favorite, and his awesome stories that he tells when you repair him are definitely um, one of the many reasons why he is so well-loved by fans all around. I love the, the idea of just having an evil, homicidal C-3PO on the ship. If I had just heard those words, you know, I would have been very curious, but as soon as HK-47 opened his mouth when I saw him on Tatooine for the first time, I was sold. He is just a fun character to listen to, and he is just a joy to talk to. And I hope that repairing him and hearing the stories was worth it for y'all here in the LP as well, because I certainly had fun listening to them again. And I hope you did too. And finally, Julie. As I mentioned when I first met Julie, he is definitely my favorite character in the game. There aren't too many uh, neutral characters in this game, but Julie certainly fits the bill. Um, he definitely talks about not judging us very much, but if you do choose the dark side up on top of the temple earlier, he will beckon to you and, uh, and ask that you do not follow Bastila uh, and follow Malak. And it is for that reason that I enjoy his character. You can tell that he's struggling. He buries a lot of his emotions, and he's definitely got a lot of uh, trouble in his past. But overall, that's what makes him such an interesting character, is that he's still got a solid head on him, even through all of that uh, trial and tribulation that he, he went through earlier in his life. His story about the Jedi and them leaving him after they uh, gave him... Uh, the ability to become one of them after everything that he had done was very sad, and it was a very unexpected story, and I really did enjoy hearing it. I'm sad to say that I did not hear the, that story the first time I played through the game, um, because I didn't really, I didn't really like Julie the first time I played the game, just because my first impression of him was, oh, he's this grumpy old guy. But I'm very glad that I got to know him more on subsequent playthroughs, because his story is definitely a good story. That is one thing I do appreciate about the Jedi in this game. Um, while there's no Sith here on your crew, and the second game definitely takes care of that, there are Jedi with differing degrees of loyalty to the Jedi Council. Bastila, of course, uh, at least until this point, is uh, sold out to the Jedi Council and wants to follow them. Juhani... Um, is trying to turn from the dark side and become a servant of the light, and Jolie doesn't really have much uh, um, respect for either the Jedi or the Sith, but he definitely does not want to follow the dark side. And I definitely, in terms of my perspective on the Jedi, I would have to say I agree with Jolie the most. And it's for that reason that I love him to death. He's a great guy. Alright. It is time. Time to go to the Star Forge. This space station is of an unknown configuration and has no entry in the Republic Archives. We have done all the side quests we can do, so I think it is time to undertake the final quest. One last fight. And hopefully we will defeat Malak once and for all. The Republic fleet must have gotten the message I sent as we were crashing into that planet. I'm picking up a transmission from them now. This is Admiral Fawn Dodonna to the Avon Hawk. Do you read us? Admiral Dodonna, this is Kartha Nassi. We're receiving your transmission. Karth, I'm glad to see you are still alive. We've begun our assault on the Star Forge, but we're taking heavy losses. How did the Sith ever manage to build something of this scope? The Star Forge wasn't constructed by the Sith, Admiral. We don't have time for me to fully explain it. But that space station is far older than you can imagine. Maybe we should pull the fleet back and retreat. I don't know if we have the firepower to go up against this alien technology. You can't do that, Admiral. The Star Forge is a factory of immense power. It's been churning out the capital ships, snub fighters, and assault droids that have powered the Sith war effort. You have to destroy the Star Forge now, or you'll be fighting an unending wave of reinforcements. Then I guess we have no choice. But it isn't going to be easy. 
I can't even get our capital ships into position to start bombarding the Starforge. The Sith fleet is too well organized. It's like they can guess our every move and counter our every strategy. It's because of Bastila, Admiral. She turned to the dark side and became Malak's apprentice. We suspect she's somewhere on that space station right now, using her battle meditation against you and your fleet. This is Master Vandor. A number of Jedi Knights have joined our fleet under his command. He's alive! Yay! If Bastila is using her power to augment the Sith, then Malak's fleet is invincible. Our only hope is to somehow stop Bastila from using her battle meditation. Yeah. How can we do that if she's on the space station? I will send a squadron of Jedi Knights to the Starforge to find Bastila. Their small ships will be able to fly through the Sith blockade and dock on the space station. If they can find Bastila, they may be able to distract her attention from the battle overhead. Maybe. That should allow you to move your capital ships into position for a final assault on the Starforge itself. I hate to ask this after all you've done, Karth, but the Jedi may need all the help they can get. Don't worry, Admiral. The Evan Hawk and her crew are gonna see this through to the end. Indeed. And may the Force be with you. Alright, we have arrived on the Star Forge. Now, if you had um, fallen to the dark side and had taken Bastila with you back to the Evan Hawk, you and she would be communicating with the Republic. And uh, obviously, she would not reveal that she had turned to the dark side during the transmission. And instead, you and she would be trying to lure the Republic into a trap, uh, essentially doing what we did here, only with some malicious intent. Anyway, I'm going to go and see if Candorus now has something interesting to say. Let me check him out over here. This looks like the end of our partnership. The battle we fight here will change the face of the galaxy. You, Revan, are the single greatest warrior of this age, and any battle we fight will bring me honor. I'll stay by your side through anything. I don't think I'm ready to give up this life of mine. This life of fighting. Not quite yet. We have things we need to do here. I'm your man until the end. Whatever path you take. Thank you, Candorus. And looks like that is all. We have done all the side quests. At least to the best of our ability. Unfortunately, the aiding Washow thing didn't quite get completed, but you guys would have you guys basically saw what would have happened there anyway. So that is it. We are now going onto the Starforge for the final battle in the next video.